Bank. She is an alumna of uh, IIM Lucknow and has over 28 years of experience in the field. Ms. Uh, Satish is passionate about sustainability overall and is, uh, and is uh, spearheading the sustainable banking and ESG initiative at the bank. So we are so excited to have you here with us, Rupa, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, we also have with us uh, our very own Krishna, uh, Shri Krishna Shridhar Murthy. He will be moderating the panel. He is the co-founder and CEO of Satwa Consulting. Uh, Krishna is responsible for the overall strategic direction, growth and impact of the organization. Over the last decade, Krishna has been working closely with the leadership of global foundations, social organizations and corporates to design and scale their social impact initiatives across India. Uh, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Europe. Krishna is an alumni, uh, alumnus of BI uh, of Bits Pilani and uh, INSEAD and serves on the advisory board of multiple social impact and technology startups. Krishna will be our moderator for today. Well, uh, so, yeah, welcome to a huge welcome to everybody. Um, and thanks, Krishna, for moderating this. Thanks, Aisha. Um, just one quick request, uh, if everybody can go on mute while the session is on, that will be super helpful. Uh, we will also keep the chat box open, so we request you to ask questions uh, to the panel when the main discussion is over. Uh, we will now be watching a short video after which uh, Krishna will be taking over um, and leading the discussion forward. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Aisha, and uh, again, a very, very warm welcome to uh, Deepthi, Mustafa, Rupa, and Arun. Uh, you know, many times I've talked about uh, Olympics and, you know, uh, and especially to people like Deepthi and Mustafa on why do you do what you do? And they talk about national pride, uh, you know, all the time. Uh, and seeing that video is where you start to really feel the pride, you know, of being an Indian. And I think this year, uh, it was really at a different level. So we, we thought, you know, um, looking at this uh, opportunity that we, you know, we kind of now find ourselves in where we did a, a fantastic round in the, in the recent Olympics. Uh, the next one is not too far off. You know, we really wanted to see 
you know, how we can bring a little bit of a spotlight on how the corporates are behind this whole thing. You know, everybody obviously talks about all the other stakeholders uh, who are contributing to the sports ecosystem. Uh, but today we wanted to talk a little bit about the role of philanthropy and especially corporate philanthropy in the role of, uh, you know, sporting excellence in India and how do we kind of do more of that. Uh, as you, you know, saw from uh, the initial thoughts that Ayesha put out there, uh, CSR in India is about, you know, in the last six years, about 92,000 crores. Uh, and about 1.25% of that has gone into sports, right? So that's a reasonably, you know, small number. The good news though, like my uh, first semester CGPA in which Pilani, it can only go up from here. You know, you can't go any lower, uh, you know, from, from here on. So, which basically means that we have a fantastic opportunity in front of us, right? And that's what we wanna um, kind of look to capture and, and move from there. So what we will focus a little bit today is really about uh, to get into the mindset of the corporates who are supporting sports uh, so that we can learn from uh, what, why they're doing it, uh, what's in it uh, for all of us, and how do we kind of give it a little more color and shape so that we can get more corporates to consider having sports as part of their portfolio. Even if it's a small part of their portfolio, the more of them introduce it into their portfolio, I think we will make a big, big difference given the amount of uh, monies that's coming into uh, CSR. The CSR number of 92,000 crores uh, is interesting from two perspectives. One is growing at a rate of at least 20, 30% every year, which means the numbers only get bigger, bigger and bigger as we move forward. Uh, and it's also uh, getting more and more strategic, uh, you know, the, the amount of money that's kind of coming in. Uh, and I think that's where a little more, uh, you know, interesting opportunities for sports and sporting excellence may lie you know, for, for all of us. So, Mustafa, maybe I will start with you because you, you have a kind of an interesting, uh, you know, double-hatted role, you know, on one side, uh, you have the Inspire Institute that, that you all work on and run. On the other side, you're also backed by someone like JSW, who are the, you know, a corporate themselves. So, you know, would love to hear one, uh, you know, how was, how was the Olympics for you all? You know, what was the, the feeling inside JSW Sports uh, as the Olympics happened and after the Olympics? Uh, I was very fortunate to be at your event. So I saw the energy that you all brought to, you know, the whole discussion would, would be great for the others to see that and hear it from you as well. Uh, but also a little bit tell us about uh, that initial days when JSW decided to start this, when you started to hear about, you know, a corporate wanting to kind of do this and do this so seriously. Uh, and what is, what is, you know, in some sense of thinking behind, you know, going so, so deep into doing something like this for sports in India. Thanks, thanks, Krishna, and uh, thanks to all your entire team for having us over. We we talk a lot, and uh, you've also helped us a lot in in structuring many of our, our proposals. So, uh, yeah, I think you know, um, I got a random call in the middle of the afternoon in in the summer of two thousand and twelve, uh, and I was like told that the Jindal family wants to meet. And they want to do something in sport and um, they want to discuss. So I uh, went over and um, the mandate was just presented saying, you know, this was, this was actually just after the London Olympics, which was at the time India's best performance with six, six individual medals. And uh, the, uh, you know, he's, Mr. Jindal sat in front of me and he was like, listen, we're not happy. We, we as a corporate... I'm obsessed with sport. My family is obsessed with sport. Uh, we want to do something. What can we do? And uh, we don't want to be that corporate that sits on the in our armchairs every four years and uh, criticizes the government or the sports ministry or the federations on on what they're doing or not doing. We want to roll our sleeves up. We want to get our hands dirty, and we want to we want to create a program that. Uh, can make a difference. So, I mean, it, uh, it was a bit dumbfounded, to be honest, in terms of someone straight out, straight out of the bat, um, coming and talking about it. Um, so I actually bought time. I said, okay, sir, can I come back to you? Because, um, you know, this is not uh, just a one-off conversation. Um, went back, took a few months, 
and uh, then asked for time to make a full-fledged presentation in terms of what where we felt there was a gap and what we needed to do and it was and again it was just one presentation and they said okay done you're on you have to start um again i bought time and i said okay i'll start but i need to we have to study more so then we spent another 6 months traveling all over the world understanding how it's done globally um even though i was a professional tennis player and i have been to many training facilities they were all tennis related or one 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 sport facilities yeah. max to max two sport facilities so when you're talking multi sport olympic facilities it's a very very different uh, you know challenge so uh, went about all of that then came back again and then presented a dire blueprint of what we believed iis needed to be and how we would make that successful um and again it was one conversation and it was let's do it so uh, yeah i mean you need you need like minded people you need people who are ready to 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 back sport in in this manner to to see such a difference um we said this from day one that one jsw is not going to be enough um uh, to change the landscape of of uh, olympic sport in india where we're happy to be the ones who have taken the lead but we keep talking about wanting more and more corporates to to come on board in in any way shape or form and uh, yeah from the time we started to now it's we are happy that you know we have almost 25 like minded corporates that are now part of the program with us um in whatever way they feel they can contribute um rupa and her team have gone above and beyond uh from from day one they've been they've been very very supportive so yeah from me from our perspective it's been it's been like you rightly said a very interesting journey where on one side i have a very very bullish jsw group that is ready to back us and help sport grow and at the same time we've been able to pitch to many like minded corporate houses that also have a passion for sport and also have this uh, mandate within their their csr programs to see sport grow in india and and yes we may talk about you know what what is the impact of that but i think on uh, on the 7th of august when you know the entire country came to a standstill i think that was the impact of of everything that we've done you know, in the last 8 years absolutely most of us extremely well well said and uh, uh two three points i will come back to you on you know how you're engaging these 25 other corporates you know because the, the vision started with the general uh, and you also said that they're helping you in many different ways and we'd love to know more about that uh, you know in a bit and and the impact uh, you know part of it as well Uh, uh but i think you know building on what you said and probably now rupa bringing you here uh you know uh, indusin seems to be uh, the favorite funder of everybody working in sporting excellence in the country you know uh you know uh, and i think it's uh, it's 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 almost started uh, uh, a few years ago or maybe even a decade ago you know uh, on how indusin came to uh, fund sports as part of csr and probably it's happening even before the law the csr law itself kind of came into play so would love to hear uh, indusin's view on you know when did you start how did sports or sport excellence it's not just sports in terms of you know uh, sport of the grassroots you know you're really funding sporting excellence across uh, paralympic and the olympic uh, you know uh, athletes and and where did that vision come and you know and now you are at the helm of csr sustainability how important is it you know for indusin to kind of continue doing uh, continue doing this yeah hi so you're right you know um, so it 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 it's an interesting story because it began because one of the management members uh, sanjeev anand uh, he he is himself a sports person like mr pa and, and so he was extremely passionate about sport he is extremely passionate about sport and one fine day he uh, put us all together in a room uh, the other management members and he made a presentation on 
on sports and how you know what we can do specifically focused on uh, inclusive sports and uh, and then we had a show of hands because till then uh, we were supporting uh, you know the regular stuff uh, in csr environment health water poverty and all of them are extremely important issues in india you know uh, and, and there's always this perpetual allocation and, and fight uh, as to you know what is really the best project etc etc and but but after that sort of an hour discussion with the management members uh, from various you know business heads and so on and, and all hands went up and and we all said let's uh, you know let's adopt this that time i remember uh, sanjeev was presenting actually go sports uh, and uh, their uh, commitment and how how we can partner with them in this journey uh, for uh, you know um, uh, for the paralympics and um, i remember then uh, indusin was uh, perhaps the uh, you know maybe the people know it better but i think indusin was actually among the uh, early uh, early funders from a corporate point of view in paralympics certainly and uh, uh, we, we did it and why was there a unanimous response you know to this whole thing and what was so appealing i'm not a sports person Right, but what was so appealing to all of us from different perspectives was we saw impact at three levels. One was, you know, with our employees, our clients, and with uh, with the society as a whole. With employees, we saw, uh, you know, when we went through the presentation and the discussion, uh, sports came out uh, not just as a theme but as a a very powerful medium to drive very important values amongst our employees values like uh, team uh, team work values like respecting the opponent uh, spirit of sportsmanship um, getting up and you know uh, not giving up um, also also uh, to to bring out the best in you you know to achieve uh, to to aim for the stars and you know bring out superhuman efforts what you think you can never otherwise uh, you know uh, sometimes you feel that you're, you it's impossible uh, but then you have that inspiration coming from within and then you achieve superhuman uh, you know objectives so so we found that which 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 as a theme appealed to all of us um, then of course um, uh, with with clients like uh, jsw Uh, partnerships and and with uh, go sports uh, partnerships are very integral because alone as one uh, you know as one funder you can hardly make a difference and i'm so glad to see more and more people uh, coming in into this space because it is still one particular theme in our overall uh, csr allocation uh, uh, thirdly and most importantly from a community point of view Uh, we felt that um, uh, you know a uh, uh, lot of sports uh, resulted in the same thing but why paralympics and you know so we we identified a set of sports that we will uh, we we we, uh, uh, we took a pledge that day that we will only sponsor the non glamorous ones uh, because there's so much chasing uh, you know the glamorous sports so much money chasing that Uh, and uh, so we so we now sponsor blind cricket uh, we've sponsored chess championships for blind we've sponsored girl hockey events we've sponsored multiple multiple such uh, you know uh, uh, events which uh, then and maybe some even today uh, don't make the headlines but we are committed and uh, because we believe in the purpose of a more inclusive society and we feel uh, sooner or later the needle will turn and you know people will uh, start talking about this as the effect has already been visible in paralympics when we started uh, you know dipti has the facts i'm sure but from rio to tokyo you know the just that was our first sponsorship and the uh, yeah, the way in which the numbers itself show uh, you know the the, the fantastic pride as a nation that we got in uh, tokyo so of course we thrilled uh, that you know we were one of the change makers in this whole 
uh, effort. Um, so no, absolutely. Fine. Kudos to you and uh, Sanjeev, uh, you know, and everybody else on the team. So, so one clear uh, common uh, thread between what Mustafa said and what you are talking about is obsession for sports. Somebody needs to have that clear obsession for sports inside your organization to be able to kind of drive, uh, you know, something like this. And I think you also bring up a very interesting point about, uh, you know, when you do this, especially with your employees and maybe some of your close partners, you drive uh, emotion, you know, which is which is what sports is very associated with. So it's not just a program that is kind of running. It's it's actually uh, driving a lot of emotional connect, uh, you know, with the brand and with the you know organization, which I think is interesting. We'll come back on on the non glamorous part a little bit, you know, uh, you know, after we have Arun and Deepthi kind of speaking as well. But that's an interesting, you know, point I want to. I've just noted, you know, on why why and how we we focus on non glamorous stuff. So I don't, you know, um, uh, in terms of, you know, from an at and perspective, uh, was there also somebody, you know, uh, absolutely obsessed with sports or was it you? Uh, how, how did that story kind of uh, uh, begin? Uh, and, and what was your thinking behind including sports as part of your, you know, kind of CSR portfolio? Uh, and what, what were your expectations as well? Well, great. Uh, thanks, Krishna, for the lovely question. And you know what? And first of all, thank you for having me here. And what uh, inspirational stories from Mustafa and Rupa. I mean, they have uh, sort of uh, described this so succinctly and beautifully that you know one one is hard put to add anything to that discussion. But uh, you know, as far as we at AT and T India are concerned, yes, we we had quite a few sports um, uh, fans in the CSR committee, including myself. Uh, but, you know, uh, let me put a wider perspective to the whole discussion. You know, our CSR program was always concentrated on a few chosen themes, you know, uh, the girl child, women empowerment, old age support, skilling and reskilling of uh, differently abled and uh, disadvantaged folks, environment and sustainability, healthcare, and basically anything that promotes diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, if you sort of try and remove the peels, if you, if you look at sports, it pretty much checks the boxes on most of these counts, if you look at it carefully. Uh, also, at and as a corporation itself globally has always been supportive of sports as a vehicle for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it was sort of a natural flow for us. And uh, in this whole scheme of things, uh, you know, uh, we got talking to Go Sports Foundation. I remember the day that uh, Deepthi came into our office and talked to us about the various initiatives and programs that they had been running. And, you know, one, one was, um, one could see the passion, the sheer passion in our voice and in, indeed in our whole body language. And I sort of commented to my CSR colleagues at that point in time that, you know, we are with a set of good people here and we can trust them. So that, that is how it began with a sort of a feeling of trust. And thereafter, of course, we went through the due process of conducting our own due diligence and we sort of formal proposal from Go Sports. And that was you know, fully debated uh, and voted upon and unanimously agreed by the CSR committee for, uh, you know, for uh, sort of supporting it. So we began about four years ago in 2017 by supporting the Para Champions program first. And then when we saw the commitment and the drive from Go Sports and the results, we sort of expanded that relationship to also include the, uh, you know, the long-term athletes uh, development program, which is now targeted at uh, preparing uh, athletes for the 2024 uh, Paris uh, Olympics as well. So that's how it came about and, you know, uh, that's how it began, but really got fueled by the mutual trust and the deepening relationship over the years. Wonderful. I don't and, uh, and it's also great to see you know, two, two interesting thoughts that you bring. One, the sports being multidimensional. You know, I think it ticks the, the fact that it ticks multiple boxes is an interesting you know, uh, thing. And that's that's while it's a story that's talked about, uh, you know, it's it's something I think we should talk more about because that really is how, if you look at more holistic development from a society perspective, sports has to be an integral part of that. 
and without a sporting excellence culture it's hard to have a sporting culture you know uh, so we need to kind of figure out how do we kind of you know uh, tick those boxes across the board the second thing is you know this was also part of your global you know kind of play it's not just in india but it looks like adnt has a culture you know of supporting sports so you're also as a as an mnc bringing you know that culture to india you know uh, which we've seen many mncs do uh, right on on bringing something you know we uh, work with decathlon and so many others bringing that sporting culture into india you know as part of their original you know culture uh, i think is also a great value that mncs like adnt kind of bring to you know uh, countries like india so over to you deep these you know clearly you have uh, you know quite a few fans on the panel uh, and uh, you know would love to hear uh, what i mean obviously go sports journey you know has been phenomenal and and it was wonderful to see uh, you and your athletes uh, exchange videos on linkedin uh, right after their uh, you know live live videos literally as the games were happening uh, but what has been your experience in engaging with corporate uh funders you know uh do you walk in and you know with with the passion that go sports bring everybody just hands over money or are there challenges and how does it how does it work from your perspective um thank you so much and thank you arun thank you rupa uh for the lovely words of encouragement to us and over the years uh for us it's really been a uh, incredible journey uh, krishna because a large part of us who work in the team have played sport at different levels and somehow have dreamt to be at the olympics but never really made it so you know we always fool around and say we're all failed athletes more than anything else but i think uh, the fact that we're able to now work so closely with athletes and be part of their journeys over 200 athletes in the last uh, 13 years uh, has been really really special uh, i think our initial years at go sports was very tough because we had to depend on friends and family um, you know and people who understood sport and would probably buy a racket or buy some shoes or buy something like that and that's all impact you can do you can do it for a very small number of uh, you know athletes and it's usually restricted to your own set of people and networks that you know but i think what csr has really done for for uh, for indian sport in that sense and the results are for us to see long way to go but i think we have to acknowledge how far we've come you know and you're talking about just 1.25% of uh, probably 50000 crores that is coming to sport and with that you are able to see an impact and like mustafa rightly said you know the time when time stood still and everyone were crying and cheering uh, you know that moment uh, we all wait for it right every four years but there's years and years of effort and hard work uh, that needs to be put in and it's not just the athlete because the athlete can get so far by themselves only to a certain level maybe to a national level if they're really super talented they'll probably go to an international level but you're talking about the olympics and the paralympics which is the largest stage for sport in the world uh, it's not easy to get there on your own without a team without you know experts and as a country uh, you know we 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 lack on experts we lack on uh, a lot of different things so centers like an iis getting experts you know all of us getting different experts to work with us uh, physios nutritionists mental conditioning experts getting them equipment sending them to wherever they should be training there are certain sports like at this times olympics you actually had uh, bhavani devi who's india's first fencer and uh, i you know i Th- that's that's a story which is so special and so close you know to all of us because who ever thought india would actually go and uh, you know uh, participate at the olympics but all this has been able to happen because 2013 when this whole mandate came about uh, they included to training towards olympic paralympic and rural sport and that's when we could even make a proposal and a presentation and actually take it out to corporate india because then you're at least getting an entry on why they should support sport because it became a mandate uh, there was not too much fights on why sport so i think the 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 mandate coming in helped all of us in sport hugely and immensely because at least the conversation was not starting from why you should look at sport you know at least that part of it changed and conversation started happening so having said that i think for us also we were able to move from about 50 athletes to about 100 120 athletes over this period only because csr funding came into it and uh, you know we've been very fortunate over the last 5 years all our partners you know indusind bank uh, definitely started the uh, 
Paralympic movement in the country. I remember my conversations uh, with Sanjeev at that point of time, and then also uh, to the board members, you know, presenting it and then, you know, sharing what is the kind of impact that we can do. And even at uh, Rio, we had three of the medalists who won were, who were from the program with just one and a half years of support. So I think talent, we should stop debating whether India has talent or not in any, uh-huh. any uh, area. But I think, uh, how do you nurture that talent and how do you get them to the next level? And I think we've learned along the way in terms of um, how to submit proposals, what is required. It has to be a win-win situation for both the corporate and for the implementing agency, right? It can't just be here, this is what I'm going to do and you give us the money. I think there are different ways of engaging with the employees, their leadership team, uh, having various discussions. So our proposals are pretty integrated into all these aspects uh, where we also allow, uh, uh, you know, uh, multiple levels of interaction between beneficiaries and the employees and the leadership so that they can also talk here and see results rather than just see reports. Uh, so I think that we've been able to uh, do to some extent and, uh, you know, all of our corporate partners have renewed year on year and, you know, committed to support us uh, for a longer period of time. And I think one of the most important aspects to mention is this is all for the long haul. We cannot produce results with a one year support. You know, we we cannot do that. I think these results are coming because of being there part of two Olympic cycles and now Paris will be really, really big uh, because a lot of efforts have gone in over the last decade or more to get these athletes to where they are now to start getting medals. So I think that is one aspect, um, especially for, uh, you know, corporates listening, (coughs) people implementing agencies uh, listening. I think while there are a lot of procedures today on reporting and documentation and all of that, it's great because you're able to show those results at multiple levels. And the one other point I want to mention is really CSR world is only talking about the global SDGs. And uh, I'm very happy to share that all our programs are completely aligned to the SDGs. So we are meeting livelihood targets. We are meeting gender equality, women's empowerment, everything that you possibly do through all your other programs are happening through sport. We're just using sport as that vehicle to achieve these goals. And, you know, like I said, the corporates have made it possible. We're a passionate team who's attempting to get the results, but without corporate support, it would have been very, very tough to get to where we've got. So no, absolutely. That's, that's very useful. Uh, uh, Dipti, and it's, it's wonderful to hear that, you know, since the mandate, you've gone from 50 to 150 athletes, which means clearly something positive has started to happen. Uh, uh, maybe the number 1.25% was even lower before the mandate, you know, and, and maybe this has enabled a thousand plus crore to come into the sector, uh, which I think is interesting over the last four or five years. Uh, and you were also, I think, talking about uh, long-term thinking in this, which means, uh, you know, while there may be a smaller number of corporates, they are committed corporates, right? I mean, this seems to be a place where people are not doing one or two year programs, but they're here committed, you know, from that perspective, which is also, you know, if I, if I flip it from a CSR perspective is a very good strategy because uh, uh, most of the CSR committee members will agree that uh, a, one part of their allocation problem is taken care of, <laughs> you know, so you know you're already alloc- allocating this rather than saying every year I look for new programs if you're playing long term. Um, building on that, uh, Mustafa, coming back to your, your uh, you know, uh, comment earlier on, on, you know, having about 25 plus corporate partners joining now the Jindal, uh, you know, uh, literally the initiative that was taken. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, have you seen a similar, you know, kind of response from corporates that Deepthi is talking about one, you know, where since the law has happened, a little more openness to talk about sports and two, you uh, in what ways are corporates contributing? Is it just writing a check uh, or, you know, are they bringing in other things like technology or do they want to also integrate it with their own, let's say, engaging employees and other things, right? Uh, what, what are the areas of, you know, opportunities to work with corporates beyond money? Yeah, so um, I, it definitely uh, was a huge, huge plus point when it became uh, part of the uh, CSR mandate for the, the inclusion of, you know, rural and national and Olympic training uh, programs. So at least you didn't have to fight the 
battle with the finance team and the tax team that you know this is allowed or not allowed so you know that 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 headache was out of the picture but but uh, i think in the beginning um you needed you needed a champion in each corporate right it it all came from passion um you needed uh, sanjeev anand to round up his entire board or you needed um, you know a pramit javeri at, at city bank who plays tennis every saturday and sunday to to say listen this needs to be done so we did we did need to find that emotional connect and um, you know someone who was ready to champion our proposals um, till the entire team bought in right and that happened very quickly but that first that first check needed to be signed by someone who was um, you know ready to back us and read, understood the importance of sport um and slowly slowly um the, the the reliance on that individual has has changed and the teams have take, have understood the value of of the program and the impact that it is having um on the community so we we yes we needed those relationships to to get our foot in the door but uh, i think thereafter those relationships have have grown multifold um with the csr teams and the operating teams to to you know not have to escalate matters um when it came to to renewals or extensions or the next cycle had to be be discussed so i think that that we've seen that that uh, progression we've also seen the the way proposals have be, have changed our own proposals i think what was what was the ask from csr committees was very different in 2014 2015 when we started making our initial pitches to what it is now um i think the entire sector is a lot more structured um corporates are a lot parts more wiser on how they want to spend initially some had mandates the bigger mncs had mandates but you know uh, our domestic corporate houses did not have very specific mandates so that has become a lot a lot more detailed out so so all of that has definitely happened and it's great because that ha- allows checks and balances on both sides and um like like arun mentioned trusted partners then stick around right and and i think that has been a very big uh, challenge that a lot of corporates have faced in the past where you have these fly by night ngos that um, you know make these great proposals get funding for one to two years and then you don't hear from them or they're not really delivering on what they promised and i think that's where um solid teams and organizations have survived and um big corporate houses and mncs and banks feel that comfort of wanting to work with these type of organizations otherwise you know they would also move on and that would then put people off supporting sport in a in a very big way right i think the fact that a go sports or a gsw or ogq have stood the test of time been around 8 years 10 years 15 years and delivered every cycle um is allowing more and more corporates to to believe in in such organizations and the fact that you know when you do put csr money behind sport you will get direct results so i think yes it has it has been a process we've all changed um in many ways and the 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 involvement to answer your last part is has also changed we have many corporates that want to do i mean for us it's it, we have an off, we have an, we have a facility so they want to do off sites they want to do employee engagements uh we've had financial literacy programs presented by wow. <laughs> you know uh banks to our to our students and our athletes so it's a whole host of things that they've they've they constantly come across some of them just come and want to train so we're happy <laughs> with that as well uh so it's it's a whole host uh of stuff obviously the last year and a half has been challenging because of uh lockdown and and restrictions and we've also been extra cautious of who we've allowed in uh in into the institute because we've not missed a day of training in in the last two years um but but from from our perspective 
it's a blank slate. We're happy to customize programs in whatever way possible to achieve a win-win for both sides. Got it. And that's very interesting, uh, Mustafa, that the, you're saying the whole proposal itself has changed in shape and color, you know, over the period of time. Um, and, you know, would, would love to get a, a quick comment from you and Deepti saying, if I'm a corporate uh, and I come from, let's say, a technology, you know, industry, and I say, hey, I can bring money, but I can also bring technology, for it, for example, to help you analyze data or, or something else to support your infrastructure. That would be an option, okay option today. Or if I was, you know, uh, you know, uh, an organization, you know, in the in the data space or in the, like you said, already in the banking space or in, you know, nutrition, food, whatever, I'm able to bring not just my money, but my expertise as well and give you that expertise. And today you're open to take that expertise, you know, and, and almost work yeah. like a true partner. Yeah, yeah absolutely. A- absolutely. Because of, say from our perspective, it's a lot, uh, it's a, a little different because of the fact that there is existing infrastructure. Yeah. We've had guys who've, gift, who've donated tiles, who've been donated uh, wow. mattresses, beds, like physical beds, not paying for it, like actually delivered, you know, linen, like you name it, right? Uh, um, milk, poultry, whatever. We'll take anything, right? You <laughs> give. Uh, so yeah, from our perspective, Nutritional partners are on board. Um, you know, technology partners are on board. Technology is a huge part of sport now. Um, so, so you know, it's not just about about just money. Uh, we're mm-hmm. happy with with whatever uh, structure we want to put in place. Wonderful, Deepthi. You know, do you want to share any example? Uh, you know, any any anecdote of how you know it works for you as well? Because for you, there's I mean, it's. For Mustafa, there's an infrastructure piece for you. Yeah, I can't take the poultry direction. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the eggs and the poultry. But what, what do you take? <laughs> yeah, so for us, I think uh, we have an uh, athlete education program that we run for all our athletes. And this is where we need expertise. Because what is also very important to remember in all of these programs, while you are supporting athletes for their training and for their sport, it's only one fourth of their life or half of their life. What happens to these athletes after their sport. And I think that is something we are very, very, very committed and concerned about. And which is why all our programs have an athlete education element into it. Now, when I say education, it's not the school education or college education, but it is how to live a professional life. So it's as basic as um, how do you write emails? How do you fill up your forms? How do you do public speaking? How do you build your brand? How do you manage your finances? Lots of these athletes get amazing awards Uh, You know, they get uh, 50 lakhs, 25 lakhs on winning a medal. And then five months later, you ask them, where is your money? And they're like, oh, I bought a house. I bought this and it's over. Where is the financial planning happening? And me being a past banker, I think on managing wealth management is something that, you know, a lot of our partners have come on board and done uh, these sessions for athletes. Uh, And I think at the end of it, we want to ensure that whenever they do transition out of sport and sport is so brutal, they could possibly be out because of an injury and they could never play their sport again. And that's it. That's the end of their career. We don't want them to be in a state where they can't move forward after that. So we ensure that all our partners who work with us, they open up a lot of ideas, whether it's technologies, whether it's trainings, whether it's workshops, uh, anything that they're doing for their employees, which they can also extend to our athletes and, you know, sometimes even to our team, we're more than happy to really uh, look at that as well. And that's been quite successful. Even um, we actually currently use uh, Australian software for athlete monitoring. And I keep wondering, you know, there should be Indian companies, uh, you know, who should actually do this. So there are conversations. Or or talk to the Australian company CSR, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Also, but I'm saying we can do everything in India. So, you know, the conversation with Arun many months ago, I think that's something that we will continue as well in terms of how do we really bring in the technology aspect uh, into, uh, you know, our uh, programs and into, into, into these athlete lives as well. So I think it is something which is curated. I would say at our end, uh, we work with about 20 co- different corporates, each of their mandates, their objectives, their requirements, their reporting, their monitoring, everything is different. So it needs an entire team to actually work and manage all of that, uh, right from a proposal stage to actually 
delivering the program the way we've put it, right? So I think that's where we at the foundation have two teams. We're a small team. We're about 17 people in the team. But, um, you know, we, we have a partnerships team and a program team. The program team works only with the athletes. And the partnerships team is really interacting with, you know, new corporates, existing corporates, managing the entire uh, part of it. So it has made us evolve our own structure as well. Uh, I remember when Indusin Bank and at and everyone came on board, we were just seven people in the team doing everything, right? From athlete management to, man you know, meeting the donors, which obviously is not effective. So we also had to grow the team, put in the system structures. You know, we have our own uh, steering committee board, our advisors, Rahul Dravid and Pulela Gopichand, they're guiding us on very, very different aspects of what we should be doing for our athletes and how professionally uh, we can run all of these things because it's not that we're just give, handing out a check from an, from a corporate to the athlete. We are not just taking the money and giving it. We're trying to understand what is the need, what is the gap, and how do we fulfill their requirement to get to the next level. So I think it's a combination of things, but it's a very curated uh, set of requirements based on the corporate, based on the athlete, based on the program. Wonderful. No, that's that's the wonderful to hear, Deepthi. And I think the opportunity to partner on multiple levels is what I think will Im increase the number of partnerships. Otherwise, it would be super one-dimensional. Uh, Arun and Rupa, now we need a, you know a big help from you all to say how do you sell it to your co-corporates? You know your colleagues in other corporates. Uh, you know, should we send Sanjeev to make presentations to other corporate boards? <laughs> what do we do to get other corporates to do what you're doing so phenomenally well? Uh, Rupa, I don't know if you want to go first and then I wrote. So, so, so I, fe I feel that, you know, if you don't look at sports or inclusive sports, like what we have taken up uh, the theme as merely sports, but you look at it as achieving a larger objective in the society when you are really working in the space. And that's what really, like I said, I'm an arts person, I'm not a sports person. And what's really appealing to me is, is the fact that, you know, um, what, are we, what are we doing here? If you, you know, step back and take a look at it, you're really, uh, you're really not portraying a victim, you're portraying a hero uh, when, when you're, you know, uh, you're presenting a role model uh, for uh, the future generations, for the society, and not a victim uh, sort of an approach uh, to, to change the narrative uh, when you speak about it. Yeah, that was number one. And number two, I feel extremely, um, uh, you know, uh, sad when people say that you have impacted only 45 people, that only 15 people won medals, and we have spent crores on 15 people because. Uh, you know, there's growing evidence now when a, when a society becomes more inclusive, it becomes healthier, it becomes safer, it becomes more progressive, more empathetic. Uh, you know, it, it, it just develops together, it becomes more prosperous together. It's not just the, just the theme of, or just the excluded community which benefits, but a much larger community that really benefits uh, when you adopt inclusiveness. I, I, you know, I, I, we support, uh, we support, uh, I saw this really coming alive in Mandeshi. We support Mandeshi for their rural uh, sports program. There's this girl there, uh, she's an athlete. Uh, her name is Nakusa. Nakusa means she who is not wanted in that, in, in, in their village, right? That's how, that's what she is named. And and she now gets medals and a pat on her back from her panchayat. And she is, she is a role model now. And now women have named their girl child Nakusa. And, uh, you know, she's brought about so much change there and so much positivity. Uh, so, uh, you know, we are really, um, I think, uh, delivering more than sports or financing more than sports uh, when you adopt uh, things like this. Uh, you are actually changing the societal values hugely. So uh, I would urge corporates to look at it from that perspective uh, to sell the concept. Very, very uh, beautifully put, uh, Rupa. I think the, the point of having a larger vision, it's not just, you know, the activity of sports, but the larger vision and, and the, the creation of heroes and role models in society is very important. I think that has a far larger impact than just, uh, you know, because one of the things we all know is aspiration building, you know, is a big part of behavior change. 
if you don't build aspiration and, and social impact is all about behavior change. And if you don't build aspiration, uh, you can't bring about behavior change. Uh, so I think that's, that's a wonderful point. Uh, Arun, Arun, how would you, uh, or what, what would you advise your fellow, uh, you know, board members of other companies and say, you know, and nudge them to consider, uh, you know, funding this ecosystem? You know, the problem uh, of speaking behind such great speakers is that you're always left uh, wondering what more to add to the <laughs> conversation. So Rupa pretty much covered all the bases, but, you know, let me give it a try. I think, you know, all responsible corporations would like to contribute to the communities uh, that they're operating in, the societies that they're operating in. And I think there is value in taking these conversations to our, our peers in the industry that this is a great avenue to do that. This is a great avenue uh, to sort of contribute back into the communities and societies that we operate in because like Rupa said, it is part of nation building as such. Uh, so that's, that's one aspect. Uh, you might want to bring it in your customer conversations. You might want to bring it into your employee conversations. And there's good reason for that. Uh, one is uh, our clients, our customers, your customers would want to do business with like-minded corporations, you know, who have the same ethos, they have the same culture, they, they have the same vision. So this is one great way to let them know that we are aligned on vision. Same with employee conversations. You know, these days, you know, with these knowledge workers, they want to work for companies who are socially responsible and are seen as making societal impact. So if you bring that into your employee conversations and make them feel a part of it, they will take pride in it. You know, they will instantly strike a chord, an emotional chord with the brand itself. So I would go on to say that it adds to the brand image. It adds to the brand halo. You know, it, it, uh, it uh, sparks loyalty within the customer base. It sparks loyalty within the employee base. So I would say it makes good business sense as well. Uh, of course, it's driven by a higher cause of nation building, but it makes good business sense as well. That's the point I would like to add uh, to what Rupa just said. It's a, it's a wonderful point, uh, Arun, and I think it's it's important to speak that language as well. We shouldn't shy away from the fact that this expands your brand story. You know, it's you're now talking about something that uh, uh, you know aligns with the larger you know ecosystem. Uh, and hence you have uh, more people who could potentially connect with you. Uh, and especially if you're talking about something like uh, supporting Olympics or, or Paralympics. So I think the brand story, the business story is I think an important one, uh, which uh, which definitely, you know, our stakeholders appreciate, you know, clearly employees appreciate it. And we've seen this in every place, but the argument you're making is it's also your customers, your partners and other stakeholders appreciate it as well. And, and that has a very interesting, you know, uh, story uh, for your brand people to leverage and, you know, and, and further build on. Uh, I think we are, we are kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting to an interesting phase here to say, okay, you know, we've, we've really uh, understood what's going on, you know, how people are thinking about it. Clearly, there are many, many uh, ways that uh, uh, organizations can come in and support uh, you know, we, we're hearing from software to poultry, you know, everything is possible and that we need obsession for sports, you know, and, and, and the opportunity also being uh, something that's beyond just sports. Uh, how do we, I think one of the questions that's coming, you know, uh, from the audience and uh, I'll encourage more people from the audience to, you know, post their questions now uh, is how do we uh, synchronize uh, and maybe both Mustafa and Deepthi, your thoughts here, you know, there's, the, how do you connect the story that Rupa just talked about in Mandesh, you know, uh, you know of, of the, of the grassroots panchayat level sports and take it all the way to the Olympics, you know, because one of the things I think we are all, you know, uh, clearly seeing is where India's uh, medals are coming, you know, is probably not so much from South Bombay or Kormangla in, in Bangalore. But really coming from the from the back and beyond, uh, you know, parts of the country where there's a lot more energy and a lot more aspiration. So there's something connecting, you know, this grassroots sports. There's the mid layer of Kelo India that's kind of coming up now, and then there's the you know your sporting excellence with the Olympics. So how do we connect uh, the you know this, and how do we ensure that we probably 
you know, uh, find a Nakusa early on in life and take her, you know, all the way to, you know, Paris or, you know, uh, any other place the next Olympics are coming up. Um, yeah, so uh, I think from our perspective, uh, you know, the problem statement that we look to solve was the foundation phase that we look at. Um, the Inspire Inserio Sport is set up for athletes between the age of 12 and 18. Mm-hmm. Right, That is our, our core. Uh, there are 165 athletes on site living and training there that are all between 12 and 18. Um, the the problem that we all experience, I did, everyone did, is that when when we are growing up in India and 11, 12, 13 is when you kind of realize that, okay, listen, I might be good at this sport. I want to give it a shot. Um, but there are about a, a dozen or so reasons why 95% of the kids fall by the wayside by the time they're 16, be it... If you're in South Bombay, then it is 10 standard and, and everything else that goes with it. If you're in smaller parts of the country, then it is poor training, bad medical advice, no financial support, nutrition, injuries, the whole works, right? And, and the ones that actually come through are not always the most talented ones. Um, so so what, what we are looking to do is address the fact that when you're 12, 13, and you show signs of being a potential Olympian or someone that can go on to represent India, um, we want to support you. We want you to be at a facility that is of an international standard. And all you need to do is roll out of bed, lace up and train. You don't have to worry about anything else because that's what the experts are there for. Um, Now that we've done that, we are now expanding into feeder centers across the country. So we have a, a center in Haryana that has started. We have one in Himachal that has started. And um, by early next year, we'll have one in the Northeast that will be up and running. So we're taking the uh, number from, which will also adding to the fact that the we are adding an additional accommodation block at our facility. So 300 at at IIS plus another, I would like to think at least another thousand across the country. So, so from our perspective, we want to have a footprint everywhere so that we can reach these kids a lot earlier. We can reach a lot more kids so that that transition from being a, a very talented 12, 13 year old to being a, a really good senior is is easier and a lot more smoother and you don't fall by the wayside for for the wrong reasons right you could you may not love the sport anymore and decide you've had enough or find something else you love more then that's fine and that's cool but if if it is for the other uh, dozen or so reasons which should not be reasons then we want to be there to to make sure that that doesn't happen so um, I think that's how we're looking at it. Um, and hopefully we can, we can increase the base of the pyramid so that we're not trying to choose from 10 talented athletes and hoping that five of them qualify. Wonderful. That's very, very inspiring. Uh, the, food, the feeder center thinking, Mustafa, I think it's fantastic to hear that. It will hopefully form the bridge between you know, the story that Ruba was talking about to, you know, get somebody like Nakuza into your IS. Deepthi, how would, how would you respond to that? Yeah, so I think um, our aim is really to um, talk, work with athletes from a perspective of at a national level. We don't go into the state level because when we did our research as well and when we started off, we realized that almost 75% of athletes drop out at a national level. They make it, they somehow fight and they reach the nationals and they start representing. And then, you know, there's no guidance, there's no uh, support financially, and they're not able to transition. And it's very difficult to transition from a junior emerging player to an international player. And I think that's the area that we really want to focus on. And uh, at least in the Olympic side of it, the Paralympic side, the Paralympic world is very, very, very different. Uh, The world of disability, I think what we've attempted to do through the Parachampions program with, uh, you know, all the support that we've got is really change the narrative. And I think that was so beautifully encapsulated at the Paralympics this time when, uh, because I remember I was at the Rio um, 
games and we won medals we came back there was nothing i mean it was just a little bit of news here and there but this time after tokyo you had the prime minister meet all of the athletes give the same kind of recognition of everything that the olympians got and we know we have changed the narrative together you know all of us here have been able to play that small role and make that change just the perception of how disability is viewed uh, you know amongst people has changed so i think our themes are slightly broader while we do look at performance as a very very big element and they have to eventually win but that is not not the only aspect of supporting uh, you know an athlete there are lots of other themes uh, from a societal perspective that we're really attempting to uh, you know create role models and i think that's something that rupa touched upon and that is uh, what even our advisory board is constantly saying you create one champion from one place like a deepa karmakar we are the you know very happy to be part of her journey and everyone started speaking about gymnastics after that right nobody knew what the prodonova vault was before that uh, she never went on to win the medal and unfortunately could not even make it to the tokyo olympics but everybody knows deepa and her legacy will continue because a lot of young kids across the country have taken up the sport so i think india right now needs a lot of different organizations with a lot of different objectives you know something that uh, jsw is doing is extremely critical what an ogq is doing is extremely critical what a mandeshi is doing is critical and it's all supporting different sectors or and you know spaces and strata of of the nation right and that's when you'll ultimately see results and tokyo is a great example because all key stakeholders worked together we worked with the ministry uh, we worked with other foundations some of our athletes were training at iis uh, you know because they have a great facility so there is a lot of collaboration uh, happening amongst all of us and that is why you're able to see results but yes without that fund of money which is there and not happening every year and i think now with the new uh, ministry mandates that have come in on audit and have, that have come in on uh, you know how to do reporting it really takes a lot of time and effort to manage that piece than work with the athletes right so i think building the team to be able to manage all these other aspects is going to be equally critical and relevant uh, so that you can focus on the on the other aspects of an athlete but i think as a country uh, krishna this is something which i you know when when someone wins a medal uh, you take a sindhu you take a neeraj you take anyone a deepa even for that matter at that point of time she didn't win the medal but the kind of the number of corporates the number of individuals number of state governments number of everybody who came come forward when the medal happens to give crores of rupees to the athlete that same money if it comes back into development of athletes and training of athletes right we will see so many more champions we are the only country in the world that's you know rewards our athletes when they win medals anywhere else in the world they don't get these kind of you know cash <laughs> awards at that point of time so it's just a mindset change that if that money even even a portion of that money comes back into training and development we'll see so many more results and so many more stories uh, avni the girl who won two olympic uh, paralympic medals i think is a fascinating story a young girl at 19 you know got got into an accident and then uh, reads a book abhinav bindra's biography gets inspired takes up shooting and goes on to win uh, you know the paralympic gold medal for india wow. uh, which, you know is is incredible it's never going to you you don't i mean i get goosebumps when i say these stories but but the, this is the power of role models right she's going to inspire so many more kids and people around india to believe that they can also do it and i think that mentality is so important in today's uh, scenario that we can all do it you know wonderful i think that's a that's a very good point and i'm just building on what you said dikti and one of the questions that's come from you know the audience Uh, and maybe arun you can take it uh, uh, first this time uh, you know uh, what what is the opportunity for a corporate you know to let's say work through the value chain of an entire sport from all the way from a grassroots level to excellence right you know start start with the mandeshi story and go up all the way up uh, in one sport you know it could be wrestling it could be athletics it whatever and then go so focused on the entire value chain that you're able to create value at each you know uh, strata of of society or at the you know at the various uh, levels of the pyramid do you think that's a good strategy for a corporate to say hey this is a sport let me work across the value chain you know through and through and i can create more value yeah i think that's a great thought uh, and something that uh, probably needs uh, due consideration i think there's a lot of merit in 
uh, sort of uh, going through the whole value chain from an end-to-end -end basis. Uh, and you would probably need the right uh, partner vehicle to be able to do that uh, for a corporation to sort of uh, do it. Uh, I mean, no one can do it alone. You have to work through the ecosystem. And uh, the idea would be that if, if you fund a particular program or a series of programs, that it is directed, uh, there is a charter to it, and uh, there is a sort of, a, there are milestones defined and an end goal defined, and you are sort of consciously moving towards the end goal by passing through those respective milestones. Uh, but you, even in the current form, for example, uh, when you support a particular program, it's always thematic in that sense. It's not devoid of any theme. And uh, I, what I would like to submit here is that it's not as if you are, uh, the, the result is supporting the athlete, but what you actually are doing is you're supporting the whole ecosystem because athletes don't get created in a vacuum, right? So there's this whole ecosystem which is supporting the athletes. So the program which is supporting the athletes is actually supporting the whole ecosystem. So think of the coaches, the mentors, the counselors, the dietitians, the technicians, all of them are getting benefited. Uh, but it's a, it's a great idea that if you could sort of concentrate that whole effort into a particular sport on an end-to-end -end basis rather than sort of distributed. I think, you know, uh, horses for courses. Uh, I think uh, the merit lies in probably doing both uh, with, with a judicious mix. That's that's what I would say. But a great idea nonetheless. Wonderful. And thanks for that. And Rupa, there's a question around, uh, you know, is sports and funding sports uh, from a from a CSR perspective, does it help in mainstreaming gender issues? You know, is gender mainstreaming possible, you know, when CSRs fund, you know, sports? Given how many women from India win medals, it's just phenomenal, uh, you know, uh, and, and how much of that has helped create these kind of role models, you know, that we are talking about. Certainly, the uh, hockey, uh, you know, was a great example this year. Um, so, uh, yeah, so for us, uh, uh, sponsoring girls or women in sports, is equally because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to say this, uh, but uh, you know, it, it is uh, women are uh, sort of uh, uh, coming under the uh, you know section of uh, not so favored uh, uh, you know athletes or not so favored sports uh, persons uh, overall in our society. And so, um, being inclusive, when we say we want to be uh, more inclusive, we do include gender issues there. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, physical uh, disabilities or uh, mental uh, sort of uh, abilities, which are slightly different from uh, the others. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, I think um, uh, sports is, because, you know, it, it, it also uh, gives by livelihood uh, gender, and normally, mostly, you focus on livelihood when you talk about gender, uh, and you make a woman financially independent, uh, equally important, I think, is being independent in your, uh, you know, in your thought process and being a confident individual. And that comes when you play sports. Uh, you know, just just being able to, you know, uh, get up and fight again. So that spirit, uh, you know, that gets developed when you are a sportsman uh, is a great spirit for, uh, I think, uh, for women to cultivate uh, because there will be challenges and it, it's a very useful skill. So yes, uh, we, we do support it very actively. Krishna, I really don't agree with this question, to be honest. <laughs> the girls do way better than the guys. I don't know who's who posts this question. I, I was going to really say irrelevant. that all our medals have been it's by the girls. It's, it's so irrelevant and it's really yeah. not a, a question anymore. I mean, Rio, you had two girls winning yeah. two, two medals. Where were the guys sleeping? Yeah. All right <laughs> till halfway through tokyo there were only women medalists women who were winning, only yeah. halfway through did the guys wake up so i really don't know why we keep <laughs> having this conversation about uh, <laughs> yeah. my institute uh, we have equal number of guys and girls I, and they i mean really these girls are are, are way better and <laughs> are getting supported and they are performing so there's no such thing that they're not getting supported so I really think that this question should be. So I think here uh, we need to we need to lobby about. For, we need to lobby for more boys getting funded. Uh, I guess right. I mean, in this forum. Though. <laughs>
Yeah, if you're doing any Seriously. research about funding sport, you will have more women that you're funding because of yeah. the results. You know, I, so. I think the question, uh, and I fully agree. I think there's there's no uh, question about that. I think the uh, the question, the spirit of the question was, is that helping the gender issues in the mainstream world? You know, uh, with I women more willing. Give one example, Krishna. I think just to set context over here. Um, if you, if I talk about the para champions program, um, it, at Rio you had uh, Deepa Malik, who was also part of the program, uh, who was a mother of two children. Uh, you know, uh, was in the army, and today she's given up sport, but she now is the president of the Paralympic Committee of India, right? So if you see a that from an age standpoint or from a ability standpoint or performance standpoint, it doesn't matter in the disability world because sometimes these accidents that happen. Uh, happen very late in their lives. And I think uh, disability is something that, um, you know, could happen to any one of us at any time. And it could change your life overnight, right? So it is currently able-bodied, all of us. And I think when you look at disability and gender and you look at empowerment, all the programs, whether it's at an IIS or if you've looked at 10 years of data as well, all these lives have changed because today they have jobs. They're giving, taking care of their family. They are breadwinners of their family. They are, they tick every single box that you're talking about and they've made India proud, right? And it's nation building. So I think it's how you present the proposition to a corporate and what all you're actually able to tick off. Um, and definitely this is, uh, you know, like Arun rightly mentioned, you're, you're creating nutritionists, mental conditioning experts, you're, you're, you're professionalizing the entire Indian eco sporting uh, system as well, right? A lot of women even over there. So it's how you look at gender. And I think traditionally, we look at gender only from a poverty standpoint and girls from that standpoint. And I think if that changes, uh, we won't be asking, matter. don't having to answer these questions. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's, an, manner, yeah. that's an important no, no, just, point. Just, just to defend the, you know, just to defend the counter view. Yeah. You still have girls' cricket plays in a different, uh, you know, sort of place than men's cricket. You still have girls' hockey, which is very different from men's. So there is mainstream and there is not mainstream even now. Which is, uh, you know, which is an unfortunate uh, sort of a situation. Yeah. So just to put it in perspective, that's all. It, it, yeah. it, it, it is Absolutely. what it is. There are surely shining examples we are all proud of. But, you know, it's uh, unfortunately a little bit about, uh, you know, where uh, the society is today. Uh, right. When you're looking at uh, across uh, strata, uh, not, yeah. not everybody has the same opportunities and, and the role models that we are creating are hopefully helping you know kind of break those uh, you know uh, barriers as we move forward one of the questions rupa a little Mustafa, bit Mustafa, beyond... i must say i'm very glad to hear that 50 50 percent you said even our bank does not have that many you know, women employees <laughs> if if i had a choice it would be 100 presented this much much higher percentage one. of winning medals for I, I have presented this on multiple occasions internally <laughs> saying it should be a full girls program believe me <laughs> i no faith in the boys winning anyway <laughs> <laughs> so, Rupa, just a little bit beyond CSR, but I think from a corporate lens perspective, uh, uh, you know, getting your thoughts and Arun would love your views as well, saying, is there an opportunity, you know, Adipti touched upon the fact that sports is, you know, uh, short-lived or sometimes even difficult, you know, you may, from injuries to so many other perspectives, you may not be able to continue. So, is there an opportunity for corporate to go beyond, you know, CSR and also look at, employing you know sportsmen a lot more uh, which then creates a sporting culture to be much stronger you know is that something from a policy lens point of view there's an opportunity to think about yeah it's interesting uh, many many corporates traditionally do have that, obviously, yes yeah you know do have uh, you know sports uh, sportsmen in their uh, you know famed sportsmen in uh, playing for them and you know in sponsoring them and so on and so forth uh, more, more from the public sector, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. than the private sector. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Uh, you know, in my experience, the skill sets are a little different. I haven't uh, seen. I don't think they just want to be, you know, so just doing something to. I mean, you have to find respect right. and dignity yeah. in your profession, right? So, you know, you if you have to find that right, uh, right fit. Uh, for people and and so what Deepthi mentioned earlier that you know 
it's important to give them life skills a little bit different for uh, livelihood uh, also after uh, the for, for you know for planning ahead i think that's very important deepthi and you know i don't know whether we today we partner in that space yes. we can yeah we can we can, uh, we can certainly we can certainly i think it's very important to do that because it's important to have dignity uh, and not just get accommodated uh, absolutely so yeah, that, because of your past which is what the you know the person with disability philosophy was with many many you know uh, institutions which would not help either the person or right. the institution in the long run i don't what are your views on this you know is this another way that corporates can say hey i can maybe even skill and then you know uh, and then take in sportsmen you know uh, obviously there's a cost of skilling there but uh, you know with some great other skills that they bring uh, you could actually you know encourage more people and and specifically parents maybe now a little more open to say okay chalo you know uh, state khel liya national khel liya to koi to job to de dega because india has a culture of giving considering sportsmen so i think it's a great idea especially in our industry you know the technology industry reskilling and making the skills pivot comes naturally you know why because the pace of change of technology is so quick that even your experienced current workforce has to be reskilled has to be pivoted to make them stay relevant so it it is a great idea to have this kind of fresh channel of infusion of people coming from a sports background and having them make the pivot like rupa said you know it's important to sort of give them a different set of skills and train them or pivot them and then point them in the correct direction i think our industry is probably most ripe for that kind of uh, pivot i would say so absolutely wonderful so if i can point. add yeah Please. i want to add on to that uh, so we have a we have a program uh, where along with along with city bank like actually where we have a uh, created a an endowment fund where any athlete post career can can apply for financial support for higher education they want to be, do a coaching degree or they want to do an mba or they want Absolutely. to do sports science or whatever um because i mean even if we have 300 athletes we will be super super happy and lucky if 10% 15% are making a financially stable career out of sport right the rest of them are going to transition into something else and have to have a solid livelihood so we do have this program where they can come back after their career is over and uh, seek financial support for um higher education to you know to build their 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 life after that so i think that is it is very very important because you're going to play till you're if you're very lucky 30 35 uh, but there's so much more after that uh, in life so it's it, it's it's i don't think it's very easy for corporates to just employ someone just because they are uh, rather they Asian support games them, whatever they want Asian games wrestler right what will that guy or girl go and do right they need to be educated they need to have certain skill sets then only they are going to be employed by a uh, corporate and even what what rupa mentioned about the psus hiring giving jobs to these to these athletes it's kind of linked to while they're still playing yeah. the minute they stop playing they have to go to office and then they have to do something but when they go to office they are not equipped to do anything yeah, yeah. so then it 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 kind of uh, the purpose is lost and so it's great they get a salary while they are still competing but the day they decide that they've had enough and then they have to go into office and be part of some department where they don't understand head or tail of what's going on then it just all kind of falls apart so from our perspective it is it, no, it is very really important yeah. to make them to they should be ready right otherwise there's no point no it's a wonderful thought uh, mustafa and i think one of the things as i'm making my notes i realize there's so many interesting things all of you are doing so one commitment from our side at satwa is we're going to curate all of these uh, initiatives that all of you are doing and make sure that the larger csr ecosystem hears about it uh, you know very soon so we'll be in touch with all of you we're coming a little bit to the end i know some of you have a hard stop uh, you know there are many more questions at the in the chat box i don't think we can cover all of it uh, uh, 
maybe we just go around the table uh, and uh, uh, and hear one uh, prediction for Paris and one wish from the CSR ecosystem. You know, from each one of you, uh, one prediction on how Paris we will will have. You know, what will happen in Paris, uh, and one uh, one wish from uh, you know the CSR ecosystem. Arun, starting with you because I know you you have a little bit of a hard talk. So I've, I've never been uh, a good predictor. Whatever I say turns out to be untrue. So I wouldn't venture here. I leave that to the experts here. But I think uh, purely from an uh, you know CSR perspective, I would say, hey, you know, medals are important. Uh, they are uh, sort of a visible evidence of success. But I think it's not just about medals. I think it's all about raising the overall level of participation and performance in the sport and giving the best chance to talent to succeed by removing the roadblocks in their path. That's what it should be all about. Of course, medals are a great indicator of uh, that effort. That's yeah, what a, I would like to say. It's a fantastic point, uh, Arun. I think this, I mean, I think we should uh, follow Amir Khan and say, don't follow the medals, follow everything else, you know, in three years and you'll get the medals, right? I mean, follow excellence uh, and it'll happen. Uh, Deepti, you know, your prediction and uh, one wish from the CSR ecosystem. Okay, prediction. I think uh, we had our largest contingents in both the Olympics and Paralympics this time at Tokyo. You had 120 at the Olympics and 54 at the Paralympics. I'd like to see that hopefully doubled if possible. I think there is a lot of talent and at least qualification because only when we qualify, the probability of medals is going to go up. So I'm going to stick to qualification and not medals. Uh, I think that's a great indicator. And um, CSR world, I, I wish we we post this session as well, get flooded with queries and more support, you know, rather than us going to different corporates. Very grateful to all our partners, I think, who've continued their support uh, to, to Indian sport. I think just the level of all of what we're talking about has happened because of this contribution and it would not have been possible without all these partners that we've been talking about. So thank you so much, Rupa. Thank you, Arun, um, for your support. <laughs> thank you. I don't I know you have to rush. Uh, so formally, I want to thank all corporates and, you know, leaders like Indusin and Arun from at and to really, you know, uh, supporting this initiative uh, uh, and really bringing those moments of joy that Mustafa talked about in the beginning. Uh, and many, many corporates. Recently, there was an article by Forbes as well on how CSR supported uh, the entire Olympic story, almost about 10 to 15 companies have been, you know, kind of talked about there. Mustafa talked about 25 other companies. I'm sure Deepti has a list. So all of the corporates out there who've supported this, uh, you know, a very, very warm thank you from all of us from the ecosystem. Uh, and we will also uh, hopefully, you know, have more of you uh, coming in, you know, as, as we move forward. Uh, I don't feel free to drop out if it's too, you know, it's getting too tight for you. But Rupa, your prediction for uh, Paris uh, and uh, your, uh, your wish for, uh, you know, from the CSR ecosystem. Like I said, wrong, wrong person to predict anything about <laughs> sports. So I will not do that. <laughs> and uh, about, uh, about CSR, I mean, I'm just humbled uh, that, you know, uh, uh, in a, to, to be where I am and to be, you know, writing out checks, I think. It's, it's just a vehicle, uh, the real change makers are out there, uh, you know, who are actually uh, doing a phenomenal, uh, you know, task and um, the and organizations like Go Sports and JSW Sports are really the, uh, you know, torch bearers. And we are just, uh, you know, the kerosene, I would say, there to, you know, uh, to help them along in their journey. I think so it's nothing much to write out a check. I think uh, the real challenges are what they are doing, and uh, they are equally uh, uh, to be applauded along with the real heroes, of course. Brilliant. Thank you, Rupa. Mustafa, your prediction and what is your wish for the CSR ecosystem? What do you want them to do? My prediction is that. Uh, we will finally break this single digit barrier that we have in the Olympic sports. Um, I think there are just a lot of positives in the, in the entire ecosystem, um, not just in terms of corporate involvement, but with all stakeholders, I think there's a lot more of a, uh, collective effort going on in, in sport in general. 
and i also believe that the the push coming in from from the government and the importance being given to sport is is a is a very very big part of what we are seeing right now in in indian sport so i do believe that we will really uh, double down um what i want uh, to wish for csr committees is uh, yeah just get more bullish on sport understand the importance of it um understand the value that it brings there is no there is no great nation in the world that is not a sporting powerhouse and until india is recognized as a sporting powerhouse you know we will always fall short on being recognized as a as a you know, real global nation you know? so it is very important it is a soft power that that everyone recognizes and the more corporates are recognized that are going to just help us get there faster we will get there we will we will definitely get there Need to but it will be sooner rather than later Brilliant. thank you uh, mustafa deepthi rupa you know for your uh, for your thoughts it's a, i mean absolutely wonderful uh, conversation uh, you know i think three four things that were very very clear was one we need you know to to ride on uh, you know uh, people who are passionate about sports you know to take the rest of us there uh, i think it's very very important to have that mindset especially in your leadership it helps a lot in your board uh, having that mindset of sports uh, you know to be able to do this well and i think it's way beyond just sports it's a lot more about than winning medals i think that's the most important message to take from here to say this is really about uh, you know development this is about uh, building the ecosystem from gender angle to sdg angle to soft power angle we're talking about many many different things and there are many ways of contributing it's just not about writing the check uh, you know uh, i mean it was fantastic to hear about the examples that deepthi and mustafa talked about in various ways people can come in uh, and how uh, rupa and arun talked about uh, both from employees clients community to your brand uh, getting benefited from all of this uh, you know ecosystem so clearly seems to be a win win Uh, and i hope that together we can reduce and you know lower the barrier to fund sports in this ecosystem and that 1.25% uh, like my cgpa will only go up from here on and uh, you know and we'll all do well in the end so thank you so much for your time really appreciate it uh, and uh, uh, thanks to all of your organizations for supporting and hopefully together we will you know we can create a forum or a platform that can come together and support paris so we will be in touch with some thoughts around that Uh, and we'll see if more like-minded corporates can join and together you know create an ecosystem that can have a little bit of a view on the the Paris Olympics and beyond uh, but thank you so much for your time really appreciate it thank you and have thank a good evening thank you thank you thanks, thanks. Thank see you bye thank big team mustafa bye 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 thank you everyone bye bye Thank you.